Welcome to the silence of the universe. Featuring me, Doyle the dog, Pan the yam, and Erica, the wife. She's filming. And speaking sometimes. Take one. Let's go see Doyle. Doyle! Who's the baby boy? Here's my baby boy! How are you? Relaxing? Oh, you're such a pretty boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, baby. Now let's go see Pam. The Yam. Pam! Pam! Pam? Pam? Erica, I think something's wrong with Pam. Oh, maybe she's just a little lethargic, sweetie. Her fibromyalgia might be acting up. <sighs> Imagine that. What's happening, everybody? As most of you know, one of the most idiotic excuses people can use to not become vegan is to claim that carrots suffer just like cows do. That there's an asparagus holocaust taking place. Those comments get trite to me, too, just so you know. I'm not immune to all the frustrations that everybody else goes through. I'm just fortunate because I've always had a crowd of students to talk to, so I come up with different ways to uh, destroy arguments and show people how stupid they're being. Well, let me share something with you about the plant-suffering argument. Now, I addressed this in my last speech, the excuses speech, and we're going to watch the plant-suffering clip at the end of this video. I also have an essay on my website, adapt.org, entitled The Insipid Killing Plants Argument. Got a lot of cool ways to destroy this argument there, too. But let me tell you something that's not in the speech and not in that essay. I've done this a few times in classrooms over the years, and I've done it with a few friends who believe that carrots are suffering and dying, and these have been vegan friends as well. So I was passing through the New England area about 10 years ago, got into a heated argument with a very good friend of mine about whether plants are suffering. It went on and on for about 40 minutes, and she wouldn't budge, and of course I'm not budging. So I hugged her because it got really heated. I said, okay, let's just calm down. Let's go outside, get some fresh air. Little did she know I had an ulterior motive. I knew there was a tree right out front of her house. So when we got outside, I walked up to the tree, and I kicked the tree. Boom! As far as I could. She didn't do anything. I was like, huh. Maybe she didn't see. So I kicked the tree again as hard as I could. Back kick. Boom! She didn't do anything. So I said, why didn't you stop me from kicking that tree? You saw me kick the tree twice. You didn't do anything. You didn't scream. You didn't yell. You didn't call the police. You didn't push me to try to stop me. If I'd have kicked a dog, a cat, a squirrel, if I'd have thrown a rock at a squirrel or at a bird, if I'd have stepped on an ant or a spider, you would have screamed and yelled. You would have called 911. You would have said, Gary, what the hell are you doing? So you can always do this kicking the tree example for any of your friends and non-friends. Now, it really only works when you're doing it face-to-face -face in front of people. Can't do this online. Can't do this through social media. But keep this handy the next time you're in a face-to-face -face debate about whether plants suffer. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye. And finally, let's talk about the plants and whether they suffer. Because the latest idiocy and lunacy being tossed my way the last couple of years has been, hey man, carrots suffer and die just like cows do, so what's the difference? Okay, in case you were unaware of this difference, you have to have a functioning central nervous system connected to a brain in order to suffer. And this is not up for debate which is why people in the hospital who are brain dead, but still alive, but can't feel anything, are called... How about that? A little truth in science for a change. Yeah, we don't call these people fish. 
We don't call them chickens and turkeys and cows and pigs. We call them vegetables. But even if someone somehow proved that in sentient life forms like plants were capable of suffering, we're causing more harm to the planet by harvesting all the plants and feeding all those plants to the animals and killing all the animals to get the nutrients they got from the plants, which were all the nutrients that we needed to begin with. With all the crop land in America alone, America could be feeding 10 billion people. Again, there's only 7.5 billion on the planet, which means less land would be used, less plants would be harvested, less violence committed if we ate plants directly. And if plants really can't suffer, how come firefighters never rescue them? And don't say it's discriminatory, because animals are the most discriminated species on this planet. But there's still a plan in place to save them during a fire. Humans get saved first, but if it's safe to do so, even if it's unsafe to do so, don't go back inside and save the animals. But even if it were safe to do so again, no firefighter in the history of the world has ever gone back in a third time to save the chrysanthemums. Hey, Bob, quick, you save the basil plant from the kitchen, I'll get the rhododendron from the second floor. <laughs> do you think that if I gave lectures about cruelty to vegetables, especially root vegetables like yams, called my speech the silence of the yams? Because everybody knows that yams scream for about 30 to 45 seconds after you gang them out of the ground before they die that I would have been invited into 180 schools to give 2,600 lectures to 60,000 students in 30 different states. And I was just thinking about this the other day, but what do we say about fruits and vegetables when they get old? They're ripe, ready to eat, or rot. And what do we say about animals when they get old? They're old. Because animals are alive in the exact same way that we are. And plants are food.